There was only one manufacturing center in the world after 1945, and that was D Michigan or Detroit, right? And the United States. So we were a manufacturing powerhouse uh, worldwide. And the city took off like crazy. The growth here was phenomenal, right? The city of Detroit, I think at its peak, had over two million people living in the boundaries of the city of Detroit. I mean, like I said before, it was no big deal to grow up in a neighborhood. Right down the street is where you worked, right? And it was a big factory and all the suppliers and little mom and pop shots that were all probably millionaires making springs and clips and whatever it is that went into the car. It was just part of life here. You never left more than a few square miles and you had all you need. You had your whole world economy right there. But we lost sight, right? We lost sight of worldwide competition. recovered after the war by the 60s and 70s, Japan came on strong, right? And Japan basically made a better product at a lower cost, and that's how business works. I kept thinking Detroit was the center of technology because I grew up in an automotive you know, world and all that. And it just isn't. It always seems pretty clear that there's no doubt the American market is huge, so it's a big market and we've got a lot of great technology here. But when it goes real high end, it seems to be Europe, right? And when you go to mass production and incredible quality, high volume, it's Asia, right? And we're right kind of in the middle. And that's sort of what happened in the 60s and 70s, right? So that collapsed the industry, right? And, and then automation came in, everything kind of happened all at one time. And given the costs and, you know, you had higher costs, lower appear, appealing product that wasn't answering what the market was, you have to come up with something new, something better. Transportation is really what Detroit's driven by. The automobile happens to be a key one, and clearly we're getting more and more into other aspects of transportation. So how that connects, if you will, to what we do at Bruker, uh, we do a lot because all these transportation things, particularly the automobile, as we mentioned earlier, has all kinds of technology in it. And all that technology is driven by, like I said, the three things, kind of like styling, um, safety, and warranty or, or reliability. And that affects all kinds of material science. So, I mean, it's, it's no big deal that I spend my life measuring 3D surface texture. I, I spend my life for the last 30 years basically measuring an area one millimeter by one millimeter by about 100 microns tall, maybe 500 microns tall. So I've made a life out of that small of a volume of space because there's so much that goes on in that, that space related to so many things in the automotive industry, be it a piston ring interface to the way your fingers feel on the steering wheel, all that relates to the surface finish. But going the next step, when you talk about the tribology side of it, obviously friction and wear and being able to characterize that and optimize that, it's really important. Brakes are a great example of that. When we step on our brakes, we expect them to stop the car, no problem, and they always will stop your car. But we want them to stop the car in such a way that it's a pleasing concept, right? Not, not an abrupt stop. So being able to tune that friction coefficient as a function of how you put your pressure on and off the brake is, is a big issue. And while we're talking about brakes, let's realize that the early, earlier brakes, we actually stepped on a pedal that actually connected in the old days to a cable. And the cable would pull on the calipers and actually close the brakes. And then we went from cables to hydraulic system. So now we're pushing on a little piston that moves some fluid around. Now we're at the case where we're just pushing on a little electronic sensor. And we're not even moving any kind of fluid or mechanical stuff. We're braking by wire, as we call it. And now when you think about breaking by wire and all the issues there related to the feel back to the human, to have the sensation of stopping the car, right? When you think about it, it's really kind of a joke. We don't stop the car. We tell the car to stop and all the computers tell it what it's gonna do. But we really feel we're stopping that car when we put our things, you know, put on the brake. That whole issue, starting from the sensor to literally the texture of the brake pad and the way that feels underneath, all the way through, you know, the brake uh, pedal, I should say, all the way through that feel and the sound um, is all related to friction and wear. Detroit has changed from being, I'm gonna say, just an American car company place to a worldwide car company place. That uh, you just don't think twice about suppliers are all right down, literally right down the street from you. And, and also your customers are right here as well. I mean, this is a big part of the, the country, the Midwest, right? 
And so uh, this is a great place to be if you're in the automotive industry, right? Why would you be anywhere else? That's Detroit. People don't know about it. As one of my friends it says, it's just a very unsung place. There's no, there's no Steve Jobs of Detroit, right? But there's thousands of people like Steve Jobs here. You just don't know it.